I'll flat admit the Carol Baskin dancing with the stars video was the greatest better call Saul moment of my career. All right, everybody, and welcome back to a very special episode of Divulgence. Today, my guest is hailing from Mobile, Alabama. He's an attorney who practices criminal defense, family law, personal injury. He established his own office in 2011 and has branched out ever since with offices in Alabama, Georgia, New York, and two in Florida. He's been practicing law for over 20 years, including eight years or so as a trial lawyer for big businesses such as Hertz, Coca-Cola, Geico, State Farm, before moving on to represent injured individuals and, of course, building his firms into what they are now and the, the three main practices that he takes on now. He was prominently featured in the second season of Tiger King, which the first season kind of exploded during the whole pandemic in pop culture. It just it was a pretty big thing for a while. The second season's been out for about 10 months now, and he's currently representing Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. I'm very happy to have on the show, John Phillips. John, how are you, my friend? Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I'm I'm very excited to have you on. I like I said, the second season's been out for I think give or take 10 months now. Based on some of the stuff that I've heard, there might be talks of a, a third installment to the main story. Uh, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of have an update on on the case and Joe and just shine some light on a lot of stuff that the documentary didn't touch on, I think it, I could be wrong, but I think a lot of the general public's knowledge of Joe and the case somewhat stops at the first or second season. I could be wrong. You can you can comment on that, but that that's just the feeling that I get. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that look up some news articles and whatnot, but I'll start by by shining light on your YouTube page like we were talking about in the pre-show has a lot of a lot of good content there calls videos photos texts conversations and all sorts of matters revolving around the supposed murder for hire so around the animal charges around the case as a whole and joe as a person so i thought okay well i gotta get john in here and he was great enough to give me his time so we're gonna jump into that but first i'd love to hear a little bit about yourself, John, what what got you into law? I, I know you have, there's a few things that I noticed in your office that are pretty freaking awesome that maybe you could show us. Why don't you give us a quick a quick tour in the mind of John Phillips? Yeah, so, so hi folks, my name is John Phillips. I'm originally from Mobile, Alabama. I've lived in Jacksonville, Florida for the last, since 2001, so 21 years. And you know, I started off kind of like you said, doing business defense and then went to the world's largest law firm that pretty much advertises all over the country and couldn't cut it working 500 cases with a small staff under me and decided to go out on my own and started the the precursor to this firm. It's Phillips and Hunt now. It was law office of, of John Phillips before that. And you know, we just, we just kind of took, we just kind of took cases as they came across. And then all of a sudden some cases that were in the national spotlight came aboard and, and we, we handled a, a bunch of those cases. And as you, as you progress and learn, and, you know, they said, that's why they call lawyers practice practicing. You, you learn, you learn and you get some trust. And, you know, as the Jerry Seinfeld, you know, episode goes, yada, yada, yada. Joe Exotic. And I was sitting right here at this desk and got the phone call from Don Lewis's family from 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 essentially the son of Don Lewis that, that wasn't in any of the show's okay. daughter's fiance. And and he called and said, Hey, we've you know, we we really want answers. We've learned about you. We really want answers about uh, about what happened to Don Lewis. And I was like, okay, this this has to be a prank call, right? Like, of course it is. My wife and I had watched Tiger King. Okay. Kind of like everybody during COVID, like, you've got to fucking be kidding me. You know, kind of, kind of, this can't be real. 
And, you know, next thing I know, I'm doing a press conference announcing we're going to get involved with against litigation against Carol Baskin. And, and we knew because Tiger, we had, I had watched Tiger King that, that certainly there would be potentially a second version and cameras were around and, you know, all of a sudden, ordinarily, ordinary things you'd be doing, you'd, you'd get mic'd up for now, right? And there'd be cameras in your face. When we did the press conference, I think the camera was, it was just like right here. Yeah. And I've, I've done high profile litigation, but it was like, this is just, this is, this is a bit awkward, right? And, and, you know, we've, it, We've litigated. We represented Omarosa against against President Trump and his campaign, and 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 helped knock out his campaign NDAs. They're they're no longer valid. And and you know I've, I've I've with Jordan Davis's case, Abby Disney did a documentary that won an Emmy. So we've you know this isn't just uh, kind of a one hit wonder kind of deal. We're 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 litigators over here, and I've I've done it at high levels, but you know, in the introduction of who am I, I'm a father of three boys. I'm a, I'm a husband to, to, to a best, my best friend. And, you know, and, and my grandfather and great grandfather were lawyers. And my mom always told me stories about, about how, how, how great of men they were. And I never met them. They predeceased me, but it was this, this reverence that my mom had, I think that glorified lawyers and practice the practice of law is such that I've I've been on this you know educational journey and then and then and then occupational journey to to you know do it as best as I can do it what did your wife say when she, you kind of told her however that conversation went like hey honey remember that fucking show we watch <laughs> like I'm joining and I'm jumping in that world. And then like, what did she say when the time came when it's like, okay, well now I'm, I'm jumping into Joe's world, so to speak. Switching sides. Yeah. It, you know, we, because of, so with, with, with Jordan Davis, there's a Ted talk that, that I did that describes some of this, but it, when I got involved in some of the race issues and, and, you know, stand your ground and, and, and represented Jordan Davis's family against the person that killed him. We had death threats and we had, you know, we had a guy that messaged that, you know, people like me need to have money in a safe at home in case our kid gets kidnapped. And, and, and so there's been this evolution with my wife of, well, do, you know, do we want to take cases that matter? Do I want to just be the, you know, the, the Saul Goodman of Jacksonville, Florida, or do we want to do this at the, at, at a higher level? And, and so when there's big cases or big opportunities, there's family decisions to be made. And, and she and I watched it. We ushered the kids to bed and we watched it like everybody else. And when Dustin called, it was, I probably did text her within minutes, like, you're not gonna believe this, this, this stuff. And, and I, I do remember, you know, a series of family decisions that were made because when I, when I commit to something, I'm giving a hundred percent. And that, that's not only a case, it's, it's exposure of our entire family. And, you know, one thing for the people that have seen season two, they constantly wanted me to be filmed at home, getting ready for court or, you know, dinner with my kids. And I said, there's absolutely no way, no how you're filming my house, you're filming my, you know, family without consent. And we all went out on a boat. That's why we're all out on the boat. A, a buddy yeah. of mine owns that boat. This justice. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Went and it wasn't mine. And, and we filmed, you know, me taking my kids fishing and there's a scene with me and Bennett, my oldest. And that, you know, that was that. And, and again, that was a family decision about, about do we, do we put our, our, our children in this, this, epic craziness called tiger king 
But I, I thought it was important because there's no other children in, in Tiger King. There's no other parenting going on. In fact, there's a lack of parenting going on in that show. There's a lack of, of love and respect. And it's so much betrayal that I, that I said, I wanted to stand out and, and, and show that, you know, of all this, that I'm, that I do have this normal side that, you know, that matters tremendously. It is my focus, but of course you don't get to script your own narrative and, and I'm overall okay with it. But that show is, is, was crazy to be a part of and even crazier now to come and pick it apart as to, as to why they aired what they aired. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm again, just doing some, some extra research that I've been doing a lot of it through watching the content that you've put out. I still can't necessarily answer that question other than <clears throat> that's just how they wrote the narrative and, and they were kind of rolled with it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I, I saw an interview with James Gerritsen the other day where he talked about oh, it being okay. an animal rights narrative. And I, and I don't disagree because okay. the whole setup of Joe exotic is based upon 2012, 2013, 2014 email that, that nobody knows existed. Nobody's acknowledging that were between Carol Baskin, the federal agent that took Joe down and these animal rights groups. And, you know, 2014, 2015, Howard Baskin telling the federal agent, hey, can we infiltrate Joe's park? Can we get somebody in there to spy on him? Can we, can we do more to set him up because we feel like he's this bad guy? And you can't take that and and kind of what happened to Ashley Webster where where she actually did intervene and called from the park and reported this murder for hire plot or or threats to Carol Baskin's life without without figuring out you know why and and who she was and her role and she's almost not even mentioned and you, you know you get into the fact that here's this hitman Alan Glover allegedly and and Ashley Webster and they were sleeping together on the park, according to Alan, and and that was all hidden. And yeah. there were text messages that Jeff Lowe had that that he told the FBI agent, "Hey, did you know Ashley and and Alan were sleeping together?" And he said, "Don't message me that." And it's it's all this stuff that would probably take you know a hundred hours to to tell the full real story, and you know, we have, we have over 190 videos on my YouTube channel that are recorded calls and, yeah. and all this stuff that still don't tell the whole thing, but it, it shows what was, what was said in court and what was said on TV were convenient truths to the people that, that needed Joe out of the equation. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up Ashley Webster. That's something I definitely wanted to talk about. So in the end, whether it was, maybe I just didn't get it confirmed through what I went through, but who was she? Was she originally team Jeff when she came there? Cause it, 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 I, or was she just coming out of her own life path? And then, and she didn't necessarily know what was, because so, there's so many different stories and the texts and some of the emails tell different stories. So it's hard uh, to and tell. there's there's a lot of different, you know, there's there's still some unanswered questions there because at the time, you know, leading up before even before Alan Glover was was even on the park, there, Carol Baskin was either trying to get people on the park or grab them as soon as they came off. And Typically, she would buy people once they came off. There's there's David Stanton, who was one of the videographers. Carol hired him and and David became Carol's videographer. And, you know, he's done these old videos where he talks about how he was paid, put on, you know, given a Florida vacation to give a deposition where Howard put a video camera and he would, you know, he was getting paid to say bad stuff about Joe that they then send off to to this this you know the federal agent that that was working on his case for so many years and ashley so the best that we have as far as physical evidence is is jeff or lauren 
Um, Cause at the time I think they shared a Facebook group, Facebook page, but Jeff and Lauren Lowe were messaging with Ashley Webster and they had an opening at the park. They flew her out. There's a question of whether Ashley was flown out to work at the park or to, to be the part of the triangle for, for Jeff and Lauren. She arrives. She's according to others a bit off. She, there's a story. And again, I, I'm just telling what people told me, but there, you know, she wraps, she, she puts feces on herself at some point. She's, she's trying to, you know, poke her head around every conversation. She, I think smokes weed with Travis and she's just, she's just infiltrating in a way. Right. Okay. I didn't just somebody coming to work. Yeah. And there's, there's questions through some of the the Tim Stark narrative about whether she she was date raped or 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 right. had predatory behavior by Jeff and Lauren. Jeff says no, absolutely not. She didn't fit our quota as far as attractiveness, and so we we sent her to to stay with Alan. Alan says they had a, a sexual relationship, but in that they shared his, some of his, they shared her pills, I think. Right. Yeah. But her medication. Yeah. Eventually she's, she's kicked off the park because what hap what happens ultimately is she has this giant mastiff or large dog. It doesn't come with her. She signs off that she can't have animals because it's a freaking tiger park. Yeah. And she, she brings this dog in claims it's her service animal. The dog eats part of Joe's, one of Joe's trailers and they put the dog in a cage and she flips out, says, you know, why is my dog in the cage next to tigers? And it, it becomes this scene and they, they kick her off the park. And before she even leaves, she, she makes the phone call to Carol and I think PETA that that says we have the recording of of the voicemail she left for Carol. It's on one of my one of my videos. But it's I just want to let you know that that Jeff, Lauren, and Joe, all three, ha, you know, have talked about killing you. Well, shit that that happened every single day among all of them. Yes, there was always this this you know narrative about about wishing Carol was dead. That's the there's no secret to that. But turning that into, you know, a, a murder for hire plot. But her story is that they were going to give her money to go kill Carol, which makes no sense whatsoever. Why, why would you recruit a stranger that you don't like that's causing drama, that's, that's you know, banging Alan, you know, but everybody, it's so many of this cast has changed their narrative after the fact either to make it more relevant because we know Ashley's pitched a book. Okay. Yeah. And really? Yeah. And you know, she's, she's, it, it's just, it, it, and, and she's, you know, she's called herself kind of the first hit woman and tried to, you know, tried to make herself part of the story. Oh but I, but I, I will admit if it wasn't for her calling and leaving the message, none of this happens because she's the one that said, all right, there's this murder for hire that sends, that sends agent Bryant to meet with James Garretson. And they talk, they wire up James Garretson. And then they, they then recruit essentially this, this, they kind of work on Alan Glover and get him to, say certain things and do certain things and then they have this other fbi agent that's that's you know allegedly was involved even though he admitted that the way that his story was that he was he asked for guns he asked for two phones and he asked for money and he got none of it but yet he's you know been recruited for a murder for hire and it, it was just all, it, it was all this Joe Exotic, the character talking shit that was used against him. And, you know, Jeff and James had a lot to gain if Joe's out of the park. 
absolutely yeah yeah and you know it was this whole thing going on at once where where it was manipulating reality and whether it intended to or not i believe it did but whether it intended to or not when you're throwing money around at witnesses it 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 obstructs justice and and it's it was this crazy thing that some days i was involved with some days i said fuck it i'm not doing this anymore and it, you know we we needed the ending to be where the ending went i knew as soon as we filmed that last scene that that was the that, that was it i was like that's the final scene yeah. has to be and and it and you know I, but i didn't know so it, but it it was it people ask me if i had to do it all over again would i and I, and i have to explain i'm not crazy right i'm not i'm not quite the character that they portray me to be i'm pretty prudent to be where i am in my career but oh. but i am a little crazy but i, I would do it all over again I, I would. I'd, I'd make some things different, but I would. James Gerritsen, had he acted as an undercover informant before all this? I get that impression that he's, or no. I just no, got that impression. So, so James's, James's history is, is pretty fucked up. So James, and this is stuff people don't know. They just, they just know Jet Ski Boy, right? Long yeah, before man. this, James had a rotten history for abusing animals he had a like a circus sort of thing so first first it starts off that he's like a part of this religious cult or 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 something that 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 brings in animals like brings in a tiger and that gets kind of shut down and so he rents a tractor trailer and he has this 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 he has tigers living on a tractor trailer and that he gets cited for for parking violations and and you know he conditions because animals can't live in a metal box right that's on the road and he get he gets in trouble for these tractor trailer violations and ultimately gets in you know he and his wife at the time get in a lot of trouble carol's on his ass back early i mean this was long before joe Okay. And gets him escorted. So she brags, Carol brags about at some point about getting getting James kicked out of Florida. And James like, oh, I'm still in Florida with my jet ski business. No, back back then, she got him escorted to the state line and escorted out of Florida into Georgia. And then he he wound back up in Texas because of emaciated animals on this tractor trailer tour. And so James James goes from you know from this kind of carnival guy to being wanted by the USDA and being on the radar and then his one of his tigers tears off the arm of somebody at a at a at at a other park and that person dies and the USDA and all the federal agencies get even further involved and they completely take away in a in a court order, uh, James's ability to not only own animal exotic animals but but be affiliated with somebody that does. So James has this crazy multiple page court order that because of his abuse of animals that says he can't be around animals, and yet he dot 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 yada 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 he winds up being used by the federal government to buy animals from Joe and 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 facilitate this stuff even though you know be long before joe he was one of the biggest abusers of animals that 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 we can find in this industry and he's still not allowed to have them and in that court order james is james and he's all pissed off and he threatens a federal official with releasing tigers on the national mall like i'm gonna bring my tigers and release them on the national mall like, in Washington, I'll, I'll send it to you. you can put it right up on the screen where, where James Gerritsen, you know, said that to a federal official. And it's 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 just this crazy, crazy thing that. You know, James wasn't a confidential informant, but James also needed to get his ass out of trouble 
because he owed money under this well, order. That's what it is, right? He couldn't have animals. And to, to ingratiate himself back with the USDA and, and fish and wildlife and all of that certainly did benefit him because meanwhile, his second wife or girlfriend, the, 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 the mother of his child, had they had animals together. Yes, okay. And so here he was back in the same boat with Brittany Medina owning tigers that he owned and he he can't get away from them. like and then and then you get into his credit card fraud schemes and his his other scams and schemes and you know the day he testified like James Garrettson's a 2 hour special we could do but the day he testified he got on the phone answered the call from Eric Good, the producer. And he said, I'm going to come down to your, to your little shop and let's, let's, let's do an interview. And he said, okay, but I need, I need you to do something. I need five grand. And Eric Good says, okay, that's fine. I'll see you tomorrow. But, and don't tell anybody this, but I can't pay you for your interview. So I need you to find some collateral, you know, to license me and I'll license the photos, but go find some photos because, you know, I'll, I'll, I I'll can't pay you for your interview. Well, he recorded, James recorded that call and, and handed over his cell phone to us. And so we have literally that recording. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, before trial's even over, you've got, you've got these witnesses on the take and being paid by Tiger King, which is supposedly this independent documentary. And, you know, none of it, None of that information was given over to Joe's public defender. The FBI was was you know tucking it down, and and we have recorded calls between James and the U.S. Attorney during you know before he testified, and even after he testified. Oh, you did a great job! Thanks for helping our case. I'm, and yeah. it's it's it, it's just that. there's just so much stuff that I get looking at Joe Exotic and saying man, this guy's wild. He's crazy. He probably did it. He hated Carol and all that, but pause that. And, and let's go logically through Alan Glover, Jeff Lowe and James Garrettson and agent Bryant and Amanda green and, and PETA and G and, and all of that. And then you'll start to really understand in the Baskins, you'll really understand that there was so much and so many people that, that would benefit if Joe was gone, that they just used his eccentric outspoken nature against him. Exactly. I totally agree with that. Was in, in all in all was Alan Glover essentially, he was just manipulated by Jeff into screwing Joe over and Jeff just really threw him in the deep end as opposed to yeah. what, or what do you, what are your thoughts? Like you've had, so, You've spoken with him. I'm the only guy. I'm the only guy outside of the Tiger world that's spent time with Jeff, Alan, Jay, Rinky, all of them, you know? And and Alan, despite his teardrop tattoo and his his kind of sometimes scary demeanor, might be the sweetest of all of them. Like he might be just the nicest of all of them. Real simple South Carolina guy. And he just he had a relationship with Jeff and and went out there and was manipulatable. But but, you know, for those that haven't seen season two of Tiger King, fast forward to the last 30 minutes of the last episode and you'll see something that could make your mouths drop, jaw drop. And that's before the plan to kill Carol. Jeff Gordon Allen and Alan planned to kill Joe because they Jeff had an insurance policy with his name on it. And, and, and the plan to kill Joe was for Joe to drive his four wheeler across a, a trip wire, a, a, a wire tied between two, two trees and decapitate him. Well, let's remember what the plan was to kill Carol. It was to lay in wait while she drove her bicycle along a path and cut her head off. And, you know, it's the same murder plot, but yet Joe is supposed to have come up with it. And, and, right. you know, Alan just wanted to get the hell off the park. 
and to get money in his pocket to do it. And Joe just wanted Allen off the park because he was this snitch. I mean, everything in Tiger King about, about Joe not trusting Allen because of his relationship with Jeff is 100% true. But you can't have it both ways that, okay, but yet Joe trusted Allen enough. It's like Ashley Webster. He didn't trust Ashley Webster. Yeah. He didn't know Ashley Webster. And, you know, Joe's going to tell everybody, hey, you go kill that lady in Florida. But the the money, the money that was given to Alan, and there was money that Alan admits he took out of a register, was 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 get rid of Alan money so that he could travel. And, and it was a loan, was it not? It, it, it was a loan but that, it, that they never really expected to be paid back right. uh, because they never wanted to see him again. Yeah. And, and, you know, he, he admits he took the phone and, and, you know, the ID stuff was all manipulated through James because James was the fake ID guy. And James, the one that doctored it and took off, scratched off for, for entertainment purposes only. So uh... there's, there's a, there's a recorded call. It's in, it's in these tiger teals. There's like seven main videos of somebody just wants to, skim through it where I'm wearing like a sweater and I shot them all in one day. And in those seven videos where I'm wearing the green sweater, I break it all down. And then I've, you know, my team's gone back. Those, and are, good. those are real and, good. And, yeah. you know, I, in, in those seven videos, one of them had the, I call my green sweater videos, but it, you know, in one of those videos, there's a call where, where Jeff wants to go out to Vegas and he needs Joe to call and, try to smooth out some legal issue involving tigers and Joe and Jeff are on the, on like a three-way call and you can hear their, them talking while they're on hold. And Joe talks about James and Jeff's plan to get rid of Carol. And Jeff's like, yeah, it probably won't work, but it, you know, even during that call, which nobody it wasn't scripted. It wasn't for Tiger King. It just happened to be on Jeff's phone because he recorded everything. But it was, you know, this this statement against interest, this admission that this was indeed Jeff's murder for hire, if anybody's. And of course, he's the one with ties to Alan. He's the one where the, the mystery phone was sent to his house. He told this reporter, Robert Moore, from the Wondery podcast, that if if Carol kept fucking with him, he was going to make her, he was going to turn her into how she turned her husband. And Robert Moore has that recorded. And from the very first day, Robert Moore, I, I think it's the very first time Joe and Jeff are it, it, you know, together on the park, the first time they met. And and here's Jeff making these threats. But but none of that was released to the public defenders. None of it was known. And without you know, without the impeachment evidence, without the other side of the story, Joe was stuck. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's stuck between the story that was presented and, like you said, his eccentric persona and just that public image that was painted of him easily, especially with adding in the animal charges. Yeah, Joe wasn't perfect. And, and you know, people need to understand that, that Tiger King's over right? The show's over. I, I do these podcasts for, for, for entertainment value and to kind of get the truth out there. I still represent Joe, but I, I don't, I want Joe out, but I'm not, I'm not doing this for fame. Like I'm not doing this because I have to, I'm doing it because I've seen the evidence and I, what happened in the in the Western District of Oklahoma federal court system is a travesty and an injustice. And and I'm not I'm not one of Joe's flunkies. I'm not I don't I don't I'm not his yes man. I, I'm not you know, I'm not Donald Trump, you know, like Donald Trump and 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 one of his lawyers. I'm not I'm not saying it because my boss says it. I'm saying it because it's true and we have evidence about it. And if people would just listen to the evidence, you can ignore what I'm saying. You could ignore what Joe's saying and judge for yourself. And, and that's the important thing because everybody else, James, Jeff, the rest of them, 
they, they, they'll tell you what they want you to hear, but they don't have the evidence to back it up. And, and we found it because largely they gave it to us. Yeah. Again, you have a lot of great stuff on that YouTube page. So I recommend everyone check that out. I haven't listened to the podcast. Have you listened to it? And if you have, what is the, how would you compare it to Tiger King with respect to the facts and the story yeah, they put so out? So there's, you know, there's, there's Netflix's Tiger King. And then right after that, this, the, I think he was affiliated with Vanity Fair, but this reporter, journalist, whatever, Robert Moore goes out there and, and does a story. And it's it's probably harder on Joe. And Robert Moore is convinced Joe is a bad person. And in fact, Robert Moore and Wondry are the ones that sold the story to Joe versus Carol to Peacock. Yeah. So that story, which is way out there like that that is yeah man. way out there. real and that up. lawsuit that lawsuit is on my desk to be filed but th- i mean in that one james and jeff have nothing to do with it they're telling him not to be involved in it and joe assassinates all his tigers on the way out like yeah crazy untrue yeah. that show was there's a lot of things that they really really throw out there it's it's fairly pro carol in my opinion as well right uh, but and, yeah and so it, you know but there's but but it the one Tree podcast is it's interesting to listen to because it does have some stuff that netflix didn't have but the other i mean the other piece of this that that really kind of is important to know if I'm if I'm teasing the other area that because we've got Ashley Webster, we've got the other murder for hire plot of of Joe and and the the email chain dating back to to the early teens. The other thing is crazily enough is is Nat Geo was also doing the story. And this reporter Sharon Gunyup and her husband, who's a who's a wildlife photographer, they were communicating also with the federal agent and they did a story for National Geographic for Nat Geo. And it was, wow, it was anti, anti, anti animal ownership. It was, it was, it was big cat safety act geared and they went from park to park pretending to be telling the story of the roadside zoos, documenting flaws within roadside zoos to then take them down. And and again, that's investigative journalism. I don't have a problem with it to some extent, you know, until they take a hard stance and, and team up with PETA and, and get involved with the federal agent. So there's emails between Sharon Gunyup and federal agent Bryant that said, Hey, we're doing this. We're doing this story. We know you're investigating Joe exotic because they'd heard through the animal rights groups. And, you know, we want to provide you information and see if you can provide us information. And Matt Bryant says, not right now. And then next thing, you know, so the, the, the day that they, that the federal government goes and, and digs up these carcasses. Cause remember Joe was charged with, with improper, taking or euthanasia of, of five tigers. Right. So they go dig up the tigers to show that they had bullet holes in their skulls. And hold on. But your well, panel in the, has... in the photos, in the photos we found there's six. So th- so this they there's six, there's six skulls, which they never explained. Really? Yeah. And they apparently alerted the media, uh, you know, according to Jeff, Agent Bryant wanted a flyover by the media to document this and there's just all sorts of shenanigans about it joe was long off the park he does he doesn't deny that he euthanized five tigers that the usda was on his ass about he denies that it was it was a uh, improper taking and and to make matters craziest and I, I don't think i have them right here but so national geo if, if you search it net geo comes back on the scene. So 
So remember, all these skulls are evidence in a federal trial. Okay. That's 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 the evidence of five of the counts, right? Five takings. Well, somehow Nat Geo gets photos of these 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 skulls ripped out of evidence bags. I'll send you the photos. You pop them up right here. Ripped out of evidence bags and and glamour shots of agents holding holding skull heads. And, you know, in the story, it says, and this was my worst day ever as a law enforcement officer digging up these skulls. So much so you went and took glamour shots with these motherfucking skulls ripped out of evidence bags. And it just tells you this wasn't, and we've asked the state U.S. attorneys about it and they, they won't answer our questions about it. But this tells you this was, this was a game to them. This was this was a, a, a eight year, ten year pursuit to bring down Joe, and these were their trophies that they were now taking a picture with before Nat Geo cameras, who admittedly are animal rights. Sharon Gunyup, and, and and then if you search, you know the names of the people involved. They're all Big Cat Safety Act people, and it's 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 all about you know, politics in a way, but it's, it, it, it's hard to, you know, to sit down and explain why there's the seven videos, all this craziness, because we only saw, you know, an hour or two of it in between all the gay marriage and, right. and you know, meth and videographers and fires and all that in, in Tiger King. And, and it's, there's just, there's so much that, you know, even watching Tiger King and particularly Tiger King two, people come back and they'll they'll be like, "Free Joe Exotic, yeah, I'm with it." And I, I I get it from just seeing that. Like, shoot, just read our motion for new trial. You know, this is this is real, and this is where I you know I want people to understand. I'm not I'm not I'm not I haven't drank too much Kool Aid. I've read I've read the evidence and seen the reports. Right, and I think I think to be fair, one thing that the the documentary does or the show or whatever it does get across. I think it does paint you in a, in a proper light, I think. And it sounds like you were smart about it. You didn't let them kind of invade your life. And you just said, you know, I'll, you're here to talk to me and not turn my life into a reality show. Right. So. I, I, I had respect for, for what on the surface, Rebecca Shakelin was doing. She had a hard job and she did seem to, to really want to get Joe's story out there. And, and I, 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 you know, people ask if I'd do it all over again. I would, I, I really would, you know, trusting them. And, and, you know, at some point we needed to use the format of Tiger King 2 to rehabilitate and show the truth of Joe. And, and I'll put, you know, I'll put the last episode of season two up there as something I would do all day, every day. The, the orchestrated ripper drama and me getting fired and, you know, starting my character off as let's make a deal. You know, that's true. I was on, let's make a deal, but that's, you know, that's kind of ridiculous and lowbrow, but mm. I don't, you know, it, it, it you know, I, I have eight law licenses. I only know of one lawyer in the world that has more law licenses than I do. You know, I, my grandfather and great grandfather did this before I did it and did it at a very high esteemed level. I've got an article from 1934's Clarion Ledger where my great grandfather was just waxed poetically about how great he was such that I'll probably never achieve that, right? Oh wow, uh, man, that's wild. And and I never met him, you know, I pre he predeceased me, but it's okay. it was my mother's reverence towards him that made me chase this goal of being, you know, a lawyer and a and and as as acclaimed of one as possible, but you can't, no matter what you do, you can't, you can't buy or achieve reverence. That's for my kids and my grandkids to decide, but I can control what I can control right now. And that's being, you know, a, a good attorney and a great father. And, and, you know, that's, it's, it's, it, it's why, you know, and we kind of talked about this earlier, but it's, it's why, 
I thought it was important because Tiger King wanted to film inside my house. I was like, look, no, you're not filming inside my house. You're not getting into my private life, but we'll, we'll, we'll go out on a boat and you can see that, that I'm a, you know, I'm a family man because that's missing in Tiger King. There's not a lot of real, you know, there's, there's very little parenting going on and that has gone on. And it, it's, it, it's super important in my life. Like I don't play golf. I'll go do whatever my kids want to do because that's, that's what defines me. This stuff's great, but you know, it's, it's, I, I beating the president and ending his NDA with, you know, with a few women by my side that were, that were powerful women. That was awesome. All um, right, man. You've done some nine figure jury things. verdict. That's awesome being verified on social media. Yay. You know, but, but my kids, you know, telling their kids, you know, my dad juggled it and, and, you know, didn't fly too close to the sun and was, you know, was a good guy. That's, that's the goal. I respect that, man. And and to add to my previous comment about how they painted you, like you said, they started it off with let's make a deal. And then they have you talking about how, you know, you're not someone who, you know, eats up that attention or whatever. So they, they well, kind of while showing me I'm a, eating up attention. Yeah. So yeah, they kind of they they took a little bit of a shot there, but I saw through it, and I saw yeah. it as you're someone who's professional, and motivated, and good at what they do, but you're also someone who has interests and, right. and and then you add that family piece, so. I was able to see through that. Can you show my viewers? I noticed you have some pretty interesting stuff in your office. What is the deal with the the shield? I assume it's maybe Captain America. And then what yeah. is the uh, the gator or the croc? Okay. So kind of have Yeah, so there's the gator. Is that The gator yeah. was in He's got an Alabama hat on him that Bear Bryant gave to reporters when he was speaking. But it's from Happy Gilmore. So the final scene of Happy Gilmore. <laughs> oh, shit. Gets his, yeah. And we can do this. This is fun to do on the cast. But it's, you know, we're Chubb and Le Chubbs and Lincoln. And he's um, waving? Wave. Yeah, that's that's the gator. Okay. And the okay. shield. That's so good. The shield is from the 1990 version of Captain America. That's cool. Uh, it was a made for movie movie that became a made for TV movie. And Captain America was played by Matt Salinger, who was J.D. Salinger, his son. Yes. And so it, you know, it, it it even ties into, you know, Holden Caulfield and and Catcher in the Rye, right? Which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's interesting. I know the exact movie or the exact works that you're talking about. So that's interesting. I figured that it was Captain America, but it looked like it wasn't your mainstream Marvel universe mm -hmm. one yeah no, the, that's cool the, man. that that shield is way more expensive than my shield but i honestly don't think i would have that shield that more interesting. in my office because yeah. it's yeah. this is it, it ties to literary it's old school like it's cool, it's the original captain america shield you know i think that's more forget money that's worth more to me than if i had you know one from from you know, insert Avengers movie here. It, it's the original shield, you know, and there's probably yeah, man. six or eight of them in existence. It, so, so behind me are, are my eight law licenses and that's the boring stuff. Cause that's, you know, this is the, the official camera angle. And then you tilt this way and you get into kind of family stuff, pictures of me and my mom. There's a newspaper article where my great grandfather got elected judge, like the original newspaper article a love letter from my grandfather to my grandmother written in old timey, you know, that's language. I love that. Um, man. That's so cool. And it's, you know, it, I am a real person. Like I, 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 we do, you know, no matter whether you see people on TV or when I, we, we do have, you know, we do have feelings and 95% of the feedback we've gotten has been, you know, tremendously positive. There's certainly those that, that want to, misconstrue i i mean I, i'll i'll flat admit the carol baskin dancing with the stars video was the greatest better call saul moment of my career you know that was <laughs> yeah man that was that was, really that was a crazy idea that went super viral and that was the point you know the the 
the seven figure earned media value of that to to forever link Don Lewis and Carol Baskin in her Carol Baskin's perceived greatest moment was something again I do it all over again but misconstruing me being on TV shows or or being interviewed by stuff that Netflix set up like Dateline and CBS like Dateline and and 48 hours were set up before I was on the on the uh, on the scene and they asked right. me to be on it and you know for tiger king purposes it's well john you know john's doing these interviews you asked me to do it you know and, and i do have relationships in the media that was part of the reason that i was hired was so that i could bring exposure to this you know at a level that 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 had fallen off and and you know I, again I, I i do cases in the media i, I that's part of part of what I do. I've, I've got a lawsuit against Stevo for a brain injury case. Got a lawsuit against YNW y- w- Melly for a, for a, for a f- the fatal shooting. I mean, we this is what I do at the highest levels, and so it's you know when you when you call somebody like me in from the bullpen, don't you know you can get surprised by a fastball. You know whose fault is that? Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough, man. But yeah, so. It's just, it's just weird how they had, they felt like they had to kind of mess with you. And, and then the whole, like, before we kind of start winding down, are you able to give us any, what's going on with like that Ripper guy? Like, I mean, <laughs> I know what's in the documentary and I've watched, yeah. I mean, your video on him is the longer one is freaking hilarious. I've probably watched it like at least seven times in yeah. full. I love yeah, it. It's exactly. hilarious. Oh, I bet because it has uh, a lot of revealing stuff going on there. So he did a, he did a bar complaint on that video and to Oklahoma and Florida, and I was cleared in both. But he, you know, it's the the thing that I've learned the most about this whole case is is are lessons about narcissists and lessons about deflection because I've never seen so much of it. You know where where. I'm not wearing a green shirt. You're wearing a green shirt. No, I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a green shirt, you know, but it's, it's sort of, it's green and blue, but it's, it, you know, it, it, there's so much of it. And, and I'm not, you know, long ago, I, I, I'd scream my injury, my enemies names, perceived enemies names and give them relevance. And it, it just brings them up. It gives them it gives them a format, and so I I won't share my format with somebody that doesn't deserve it. Ripper, I think, started off as a as a as a guy with somewhat altruistic ideas. Certainly, he admitted to me very early that that the limelight was important to him. Hell, the limelight was part of the reason I took a case like this. You know, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get paid for it. Yeah, uh, and and but it's different when you're the lawyer and you have an oath to the, to the client and you have obligations related to attorney client privilege and all that. And, and I, I, you know, as the video shows, he, he perceived me as stepping on his toes. He wanted to get rid of me. Netflix liked the drama or, or, or good productions. It, I quit, like I quit on, on the sidewalk. Rebecca came to film after, after I was terminated and I was like, there, you're not filming me. We're not, we're not doing this. I rescind my, my one paragraph release. I don't owe you anything. Goodbye. And I stuck with that right up to the time when, when Joe hired me and Joe said, let's, 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 let's do this. You got to be my voice out there. You know, all these accusations that I got paid or, or that, you know, that I, I was doing this for the wrong reasons or that I was, you know, manipulating, you know, Netflix in any way or good productions is just, is just, just lies. But, you, you know, it, it is what it is. Another thing I noticed when they first introduced you, I don't know if you still have it in your office, but it's the magazine piece that you have up. I'm a big comedy fan. It's funny. You got Louis CK in the background. Oh yeah. That's in my office, my conference room. I think, yeah, that's in my conference room. It's yeah, the cover is Louis C.K., but it's it's the Jordan Davis story. I so that was my first one of my oh, first was, big breaks was Jordan Davis's case. And and I'm actually and I read Rolling Stone growing up, and I'm 
I'm in, there's a, my picture is in there and quotes in there, like in Rolling Stone. I was like, that's kind of when I thought I had made it. Who knew, you know? So that's the magazine. I'll, I'll, that, so that's yeah. the magazine. It's Rolling Stone. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so sweet. Cause yeah, I noticed that right away. Is there anything, anything you could share with us about Joe? When was the last time you spoke with him? How's he doing? I think there were some medical things maybe going on. So anything you can share there? And of course, the update on his case, the season two ended where, you know, didn't get the Trump part in. I think he's looking for a Biden part in. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Can you share anything about the case, Joe, anything? So... I'll go chronological. Sure, uh, right on. Man. Next, the next update is late late September. We have an oral argument on his sentencing appeal in Denver, Colorado. Molly Palmer's leading that up. Fantastic lawyer out of Georgia. I'll be there. That's the next thing about about the duplicity of his sentencing. And then after that, after that jurisdiction's relinquished, then we have our motion for new trial pending. And we would expect an evidentiary hearing, basically a mini trial on on his new trial or or release completely of his conviction. Generally, it's going to come in the in the in the in the tense of a, a motion for new trial. But can they really now that they've now they look at the evidence anew and who's died and what they've said since then, can they even try it? That's going to be our question. So that's you know, that's after that. We're going to file a motion for compassionate release. Joe has beat cancer, but in the process of going through cancer treatment in North Carolina, it's it's been hellacious to his to his body and to his immune system. He's throwing up constantly and you know is having you know blood transfusions you know fairly regularly. And and the stress is is killing him. Like while he's been in there, he's lost his mom, he's lost his dad, you know, he's he's lost all his possessions, his 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 marriage not only failed but but you know he saw that his husband was was ripping him off and selling his clothes and the one that. from season two yeah dylan passage was you know sold sold even his clothes oh um, dylan okay oh yeah and 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 so you know joe's joe's life's falling apart you know we're, we're about to file a lawsuit about his music the guy that co-wrote part of his music and helped perform it basically stole it and it, it's it's just all this all this stuff and taking advantage of the guy yeah uh, and it, it's you know it, it, it's an awful place to be in federal prison sick and and you know more than that seeing jeff and james and alan walk free you know yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, clearly Jeff has something going on where he's able to walk on all these different charges that just was brought up in the show alone. So I mean, right. I, I don't know what's going on with him. What did they when when in the show? I see they flew down to meet you. Did, did they did they ask you out to the strip clubs and stuff? Like, what was their <laughs> mindset afterward? No. They're like, all right, we're gonna go hit the strip club now. Or what? What were? What was Jeff like? In like, I mean, he, yeah, I don't know if he puts on a persona when he's in the camera, but he seems pretty Jeff, like Jeff chill, is, right? He, uh, it, it's so so. There was a lot of there was a lot of gosh. Bravado, I think is the word I'm looking for. Okay. You know, anytime Jeff's there and 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 obviously the, the thing that I wanted were cell phones. Exactly. You know, that's what and I clearly, wanted. I wanted James' yeah. cell phones. I wanted Jeff's cell phones. I wanted Alan's cell phones. And we got them. And you know, they they all did affidavits in Joe's favor, which are sworn, you know, and and they all did video, you know, video statements, which you can't take back their video or, you, you know, otherwise you, are you lying then? Are you lying now? Are you lying before? Are you lying after? And, you know, that was, that was the main thing. And, and there's, Jeff is one of the best. So the, there's the expression con man. And then there's kind of the old derivation of it, of confidence man. And 
Jeff is such a good con man that he's he's like old school con man, right? He's 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 like a madman television show level of con man. Yeah, yeah. But but he's also not that sophisticated and so eventually it always catches up with him. And if you go back and look at his history with with Prince or with Evil Knievel, you know, even with Tigers themselves, he's he was chased out of multiple states too because of Tigers and one of his own tigers attacked him and one of them got out and ate a dog i, I think is, is the way the original ohio story goes but you know it's it he's he's something else and you know the the calls so there's one video that i'll reference where jeff and lauren are in some capacity taking care of Finley's kid and she's all of two years old and I think we blurred her out I'm pretty sure we blurred her out in it but it's one of the Tiger Tales videos and 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 Jeff is is saying to to Finley's daughter about you know his her daddy being gay except using the most vulgar explicit ways to describe it to this two-year-old that shouldn't even be said to a two-year-old, much less to be programmed negatively about her father. And then, you know, this is all gonna, gonna lead to him being accused of bestiality tapes that don't exist in order to get him to testify against Joe based upon the threat of these recordings, but he was all methed out. So how would he know if they exist? And it's, there was, the level of manipulation involving even a child that is so morose. And then there's, there's other recordings where, where Jeff and Lauren get in fights and they, they talk about, you know, their criminal behavior. I'll put it that way. And it's frighteningly disgusting. And I believe Jeff would do anything. And it, I had somebody ask me the other day about, you know, have I had any threats or has, has anything Tiger King caused any security issues? And it, and it hasn't. I've had death threats in other cases. I talk about that in my TED Talk. But, but Tiger King's been pretty mundane as those things go, except Jeff will lie and say anything about anybody. and. How do you defend against a lie that's that's untrue other than saying, well, that's a lie. Look at my history versus his history. But it's, you know, there's something charismatic and and it's that confidence man that 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 he could walk into a room and he he carries himself in such a way that's that I could see how he could get by as a expert level hustler, right? Yeah. But but he's when you when you when you look on paper and i have i have that next to me too you know his manipulation of bryant his mail fraud you know convicted felony mail fraud on a women's shelter yes um, exactly yeah setting up government officials in south carolina because because after he was convicted of mail fraud he was put in a halfway house but he had this resale business and and so he'd invite people buy his resale business and then he would accuse them of trying to extort him on pricing and so he got out early evil and robbie can evil and all of that all of that fraud during during the receivership case he and lauren there's a video on on, on tiger tales about him and lauren setting up one of the the court representatives yeah I've for drinking that. they that's a bottle of crown and ridiculous she walks in like she tickets. just came from the liquor store and cracks it she and Oh, yeah. sets it all up. And he man. takes one shot. And then, you know, yeah. in the report that goes back, it's like he sexually harassed me, touched my butt. Well, all they have is the video of him taking a shot without much context. And, <sighs> and you know, the murder plot of Joe, Ashley Webster's relationship with them, you know, Agent Bryant notes, use of government assistance to extort and influence. So that, you know, there's another video on there where, where the guy that just, he just wants his money for his billboard. And Jeff goes, because the feds are investigating Joe and they know you took tiger hides in payment, you're going to federal prison, buddy. And it's like the federal, the feds are protecting me. So like he's, 
trying to get out of debt on a billboard by by you know to the feds to protect extortion and it's it there's just incident after incident after incident and and then you get into the sexual relationship between him and lauren and how there's a power dynamic there and he and james both should be in jail i mean that's for for not just this but for a lot of reasons and the fact that they're not and the guy that the government says was the killer and a murder for hire plot it just tells you this is a tv show that went wrong and only one guy is paying for it yeah i agree and that's why i wanted to to bring you in and kind of start shedding some more light just help you really shed some more light on some of the facts and what's really going on so we'll call it there thank you john phillips for coming in this was a wonderful chat i hope we can get together again i think you really shared a lot of a lot of stuff that a lot of people should start looking into and start thinking about again i I recommend them go to your youtube page under the tiger tail section under the i think it's called the tiger tail section or the the joe exotic section there's a lot of good stuff there a lot of good stuff whether it be the phone calls and texts or whether it be the videos you made of the breakdowns so i highly recommend that before we say goodbye is there anything any message you'd like to get out there anything you'd like to share with my viewers no i appreciate appreciate your time right on john thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day all right thank you all right see ya